A Genius in the Forgery of Art Struggling artist Hans van Meegeren found that forging old masters was much more profitable than painting portraits. Even experts thought his fakes were genuine. Early in 1936, a struggling artist named Hans van Meegeren, who had only recently begun to earn a modest income, with lightning portraits of overseas visitors, took a new studio in Nice, and according to his wife at least, began acting strangely. For one thing, he refused to allow her into the studio, which he bolted and barred whenever he went out. He cleaned and swept the room himself, and would open the door just enough to admit a plate when food was brought to him. Regularly, his wife knocked on the door with news that more tourists were waiting downstairs to have their portraits painted. The reply was always the same, tell them to go away. Nor did he have any reason to want the menial work offering downstairs, for Van Meegeren was busy producing a Vermeer forgery that was soon to be bought by the Dutch government for $250,000. After that, Hans Van Meegeren never looked back, at least until he went to prison, as he produced one magnificent forgery after another, works that not even X-rays, infrared cameras and chemical pigment tests could fault. Even that notorious Nazi art collector Reich Marshal Hermann Goering brought one of the forgeries after his experts had pronounced it genuine. The counterfeits were so brilliantly executed that when the artist, facing charges of having sold national possessions to the Nazis, decided to admit his guilt to save himself from this accusation, no one would believe him. In the end, he had to paint another Vermeer, one he called Jesus Among the Scribes. Before a jury would accept his claim, amid derisive laughter from the whole world, find him guilty of forgery. Hans van Meegeren, the brilliant copyist who made at least three million with his dishonest genius, was born in Holland in 1889. At 17, he was studying architecture at a college in the city of Delft, birthplace of the master painter Jan Vermeer in 1632. Having graduated in architecture, Van Meegeren abandoned the subject and took to painting. He tried hard enough, but he made no impact, and in 1929 left his native Holland. In time, he won something of a reputation in cities between the French and Italian Rivieras as a rapid painter of portraits, a skill that appealed to fast-moving tourists like the Americans. His subjects, which he invariably flattered, were delighted with his work, but Dutch art magazines passed him off as a kind of sideshow performer. It was this criticism that decided Hans van Meegeren to apply his skill to the production of forged Vermeers. To fool them would be reward indeed, although the enormous sum such paintings would fetch, if accepted, would also come in handy. In 1936 he leased a studio in Nice and, locking himself in, began work on his first venture. Day and night he slaved for months on end. In January 1937 he was ready to put his skill to the test. Having invited a Dutch art connoisseur to dine with him, Van Meegeren announced over the meal that an Italian widow, whose husband had left her a valuable art collection, had asked him to dispose of the paintings on her behalf. He would appreciate it, he said, if the connoisseur would take one of the paintings, a purported Vermeer to Holland, and have experts report on its authenticity. The picture which the man took with him, after being promised a commission if a sale were made, was called The Pilgrims of Emmaus, a work that appeared in none of the Vermeer catalogues. A week later, one of Holland's top art experts stepped back from the painting after having subjected it to detailed inspection. His eyes were bright as he exclaimed, The most magnificent Vermeer I have seen. Subsequently, the Dutch government felt it had a bargain when it paid $250,000 for The Pilgrims of Emmaus. Meanwhile, immediately after the expert had announced that The Pilgrims of a Mouse was one of the finest works of Jan Vermeer, Van Meegeren was besieged by art dealers wanting to bid for the rest of the widow's collection. But he would not be rushed. He said the widow was in no need of money and had not yet made up her mind whether to dispose of the other items. If anything came up, he would let them know. So Hans van Meegeren retired to his studio for a year to emerge with the announcement that his anonymous widow friend was willing to sell another Vermeer. The same expert who had given his imprimatur to the pilgrims of Emmaus inspected this work. Again, he could not fault it, but to make doubly sure, he called for the services of several Dutch and French art colleagues. All declared the painting a genuine Vermeer. With the passing of time, a third Vermeer came on the market to be raved over by the experts and snapped up at a huge cost. The next two paintings from the collection were by the old Dutch master, Pieter de Hoek, whose initials P, D, H and the date 1658 
could be clearly seen on the bottom left corners. They fetched almost as much as the Vermeers, Convinced now that no expert, chemical or X-ray, could detect his forgeries, and sitting on a substantial bank account, Hans van Meegeren returned to Holland, leased a mansion in Amsterdam, and packed it with valuable antiques. As time passed, he put other masterpieces on the market, all sent to him by the widow in Italy. Pressure was put on the Dutchman to persuade the woman to unload her entire collection, but this was resisted. Two more Vermeers and another de Hoek brought a total of $800,000. Meanwhile, although critics still insisted that Hans van Meegeren was nothing more than an average painter, they did admit he was a great art dealer. Not that condemnation of his painting ability worried him, for he admitted the limitations of his skill and said that now he painted only as a hobby. In 1940, when Germany invaded Holland, art was forgotten, although now and again the dealer Hans van Meegeren managed to put a masterpiece on the market. It was one of these Vermeers, Christ and the Adulteress, that Hermann Goering bought after his experts had subjected it to every possible test, and they assured the Reichsmarschall that he had a bargain. When this picture was found in Goering's collection after the war, Allied investigators set out to discover what Dutch traitor had sold the enemy a picture by one of Holland's greatest sons. The inquiries led to Hans van Meegeren, who then had $2,711,740 in his bank account. The story that Christ and the adulteress had been part of the Italian widow's collection was checked by investigators with the obvious result, no such widow existed. Three weeks after the investigation began, Van Meegeren for the first time realised he was in a serious position. He might be charged with collaborating with the enemy. He could even be hanged. Turning to one of his inquisitors, the Dutchman blurted out, I sold no Vermeer to Goering. Actually, I have never sold an old master to anyone. They are forgeries. I painted them myself. This was too much for the investigators. They labelled the so-called confession an impudent and clumsy lie. Holland's art experts agreed with them. Nevertheless, while officials discredited Van Meegeren's story, they couldn't actually disprove it. A police officer suggested Van Meegeren should prove his story by executing a Vermeer forgery. The result, after the artist had been locked in a studio, was then compared with one of the finished paintings, Jesus Among the Scribes. The jury studied the works for two months before deciding that the paintings were by the same man. The court, indeed the whole world, rocked with mirth when Van Meegeren showed the court a letter he had received from a Dutch art expert. Written in 1938, the letter attacked the artist for not knowing how to paint a hand. The author then suggested Van Meegeren should study the hands on the great Vermeer painting that had recently been discovered, The Pilgrims of Emmaus. Now Hans van Meegeren told the full story to the amazed court. He said the criticism of his own works had determined him to make the critics admire his skill, even if it appeared under another name, Vermeer or de Hoek, for instance. He had studied Vermeer for years, knew the type of subjects that appealed to him, and made quick sketches of likely-looking people in the streets. When he first rented the studio in Nice, he spent weeks producing pigments exactly like those used by the Dutch masters in the 17th century. He knew every type of brush Vermeer used and was able to duplicate them with badger hair. He said he had never forged a copy of an existing work, for that would have frustrated his artistic imagination. He simply painted a picture that might have appealed to Jan Vermeer. The only person who knew of his forgeries was an Italian who carried out research into old church documents to get an exact description of the garments worn by the figures in the religious pictures. To achieve authenticity in the canvas, he bought insignificant 17th century paintings, removed the pigment from them, and then, after completing his forgery, baked the finished product in a low-temperature oven. The painting now had the appearance of age, but the fine cracks typical of the period were still missing. This problem was overcome by pressing the painting around a drum, which caused the baked paint to crack, and then smearing the whole work with Indian ink. All that remained now was to achieve the rich brown colour peculiar to Vermeer's work. The application and removal of successive coats of varnish produced an effect no expert or technical aid could fault. Van Meegeren told the court that he forged two de Hooks, which brought his total of old masters to nine, simply to lend authenticity to his story, of the Italian widow's art collection. Hans van Meegeren was cleared of collaboration charges, but was sentenced to a year's jail for forgery. He died of a heart attack in jail.